Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm in the wood shop with Jacob and we're going to be making a modern farmhouse chandelier for our dining room. So this chandelier is going to be pretty easy to build. You're only going to need a couple tools for it and I'm going to be making it out of this piece of barn wood we got from our barn. So I'm going to be making this to match the floating shelves that I've made for our dining room in our living room where I just take the piece of barn wood, I hit it real quick with 120 grit sandpaper I hit it with a torch and give it that burnt look. It looks really nice in the farmhouse. The products that you're going to need to build this, um, I went ahead and ordered some of these uh, pendant ropes off of Amazon. They're actually pretty cheap. I bought, they're, they're two packs, so I bought two of them. The problem I have with these is that they come with these horrible, horrible colored lights. So we went ahead and bought these really nice Edison bulbs and they just give off more of a softer glow. We have a couple of quart sized basin jars. We're using the wide mouth on these. And we're gonna to need to go ahead and cut out a hole in the top of these. And I'll show you how I did that a little bit later. So I'm gonna be actually making this new light out of pieces of our old fixture. And our old fixture has been cutting in and out. So it's really no good at this point, but it does have black cord and black chain. So for this light fixture, you're gonna need about three feet of black chain, or if you want it to hang a little bit lower or shorter, you can adjust as you need. You can pick this black chain up and the black cord actually is a kit from Lowe's. I think I saw it at Lowe's this weekend. It was about 13 or $14, something like that. Um, but the chain itself is just a couple of bucks. I went ahead and we picked up four of these forged iron looking plant hangers. Uh, this is the six inch hanger off of Amazon. Now I'm gonna be leaving the link to all this stuff down in the description below. We have two black hooks that I picked up out of Hobby Lobby. Um, we have our four new bulbs. And that's going to be it. So I think all in all, the cost for this light was somewhere around $100. I picked up some black corner accents, again, off of Amazon. Um, we're going to see how these work. I'm not too sure about this. Um, as with all my stuff, I drew this up in CAD and I put these in CAD and it looked pretty good. But I think we're going to see how these work uh, once light fixture is all done. So the tools you're going to need for this, like I said before, you're going to need a saw to cut the wood. Um, you're going to need some wood glue. I'm going to use a marker to mark the top of the mason jars and cut our hole. And I actually tried a couple ways of cutting this test hole right here. And the easiest way that I found was with a razor blade. I tried making the hole in the mason jar top a couple different ways. I used a, a Fortzner bit. I tried a hole saw bit. I tried a, a spade drill bit. And it was just very uncontrollable. So like I said, the best way that I found, since a mason jar lids are so thin, a sharp razor blade actually works just the best. Now I'm going to start by cutting the piece of barn board down to 18 inch sections. And this chandelier is going to be 18 inches tall by four by four inches. So it's going to look like a piece of old burnt beam when I'm done. The way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to cut my length and I'm going to bring it over to the table saw and the barn wood does not have a very good edge on it at all. So what I need to do is first establish a nice straight edge on that piece of wood. And then I'm going to spin that around. And I'm going to cut a 45 degree bevel on the op opposite side. Then I'll spin that board around again and cut a nice 45 degree angle. So I have a four inch by 18 inch board with two 45s on it. That way, when I glue all four of these boards together, it looks like it's one continuous piece. Now you could do this if you don't have a table saw, you could just butt join everything together. There's no problem with doing that. It's just a matter of preference on how you want the chandelier to look.
Now you can see once I glue this up, because we cut that 45 degree bevel, you get a nice clean seam and this is gonna look like one complete beam. Now you just wanna make sure like on this piece of wood, if you're using barn wood, both sides uh, are different. So the two sides are different. Um, they have different coloring from just being weathered and aged differently. So you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to which side you bevel in. And I don't really mind, you know, these knots being on the edges and stuff. It just, to me, it adds more to the character. So the next thing I'm gonna do um, before we glue this up is I wanna cut a rabbit around on the top so I can put a top cap in and it won't sit above the top of the chandelier. And I think I might do the same for the bottom. What I might do on the bottom is actually try and do a 45 chamfer and that way, again, it looks like just the end of the beam. It won't look like end grain, but it'll look a lot cleaner than a butt joint. Now we've got that nice little rabbit around the top so we can put a cap on it. So I've got all five pieces all cut up. We've got our bottom piece right here. We've got our fourth size with the bevel on the bottom and the rabbit on the top. Now I'm going to glue and brad nail these all together. We're gonna to let that set up. And then once that is set up, I'm going to come back and we're gonna make the top for the light fixture. One of the problems I continue to have with the barn wood is that um, it's pretty warped and I don't want to run it through a joiner or a planer and plane off the, um, the weathered surfaces. So sometimes you just gotta kinda go with the flow and in this case, the end cap is a little crooked, barely, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. But what I did was I actually went back and I undersized the, uh, the end cap and I went about 47 degrees on the cut instead of 45. That way the edges get a nice clean fit. And then when I do the sanding, I'll just come back through here and sand off these sharp edges. It'll look perfect. Now that this is all together, let's make a top cap and then we can start uh, doing a little finish on this and putting it together.
Okay, now we have our top cap done. We put a couple countersinks in there so I can screw this down and keep everything nice and tidy. I need to drill a hole through the top right here for the cord to go in. Then we can start finishing. So typically with these barnwood projects, I use a random orbit sander, but since this is so small, I'm just gonna use 120 grit on a block plane and just give this a quick once over and then we're gonna go ahead and burn it. Got a couple of one inch black sheetrock screws. These should work just fine. This cap is not holding up anything, it's just decorative. So the way that we're going to lay out these plant hangers is we're going to start with the first one about two inches off the bottom and then what we're going to need to do is on the opposite side we're going to go three inches above that so it's going to be five inches off the bottom. Uh, this side will be eight and then this side will be eleven so you're going to have this kind of a staggering mason jar effect as you go up the way. So we need to mount these plant hangers first that way we can dictate where we need to drill holes or the pendant like cable to pass through and each one of these plant hangers is going to be secured with uh, two one inch sheetrock screws. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we are going to measure out approximately three inches from the bottom of this hook to the light fixture, and then we're going to make a single wrap around. And then what I'm going to do is just hot glue this right down the top of that planter through the hole, and then bring it up to the top. Okay, we've got our glue gun heating up, and while that is heating up, I'm going to go ahead and put on the black hooks at the top.
So we've got our chain sorted out. Uh, the next thing I need to do is wire this together and test it. And if that goes well, I'm gonna move on to the mason jar caps. I gotta cut the holes in those and I gotta paint them black. So we'll move on to that after we do the wiring. Let's go ahead and wire this together and give it a test. All right, so now we've verified our wiring works. Let's get all our mason jars together. We'll mark out our holes, cut them, paint them, get them on here, and then we're done. All right, so the way that we make this hole, and it does not have to be pretty, um, but it does have to be pretty close to the right size um, because the fixture does not have much of a lip to grab on. So if you oversize this too much, uh, the fixture and this lock ring are gonna have nothing to pinch against. So. You can always buy new new lids, but just make sure you pay attention the first time. So the way that I do this is center this right here on the mason jar. Just draw the inner diameter of the lock ring. I'm going to use a sharp knife, so we just replace the blade in this. Uh, knife and we're going to go ahead and just carefully make little cuts so picture it like a 30-sided polygon okay and there we are it's perfect so I'm gonna go ahead and do all four of these, or the three that are remaining. We're gonna scuff these up with some Scotch-Brite real quick, and then we're gonna hit them with a coat of satin black paint. So this is Krylon Color Max Paint and Primer in one satin black. So we're gonna hit these lids and rings with two coats. It does not have to be a really robust paint job, so I'm not gonna use um, an etching primer or something like that. This is an indoor application, so I'm really not worried about wear and tear. So. I'm gonna go ahead, give this a quick shake, give these two quick coats, and then we're gonna hang the light fixture. Okay, we're gonna give these about 10, 15 minutes to dry. We'll come back and do another light coat. Okay, that's two coats. We're gonna go ahead and leave these for about a half an hour and then get them on the light fixture. Okay, so we've got the light fixture all hung. We adjusted the length to what we like in our dining room and I made sure that the wiring was correct. So we're gonna go ahead and make, put the mason jars on. So we're gonna slip the lock ring up. We're gonna hang that up here. Let's go ahead and thread on the mason jar lid. This hole is this hole is cut tight enough where we can grab on the threads and we'll put the lock ring right on, like so. Let's grab our light bulb. Put that in. We're gonna wipe our fingerprints off. Go ahead and grab our mason jar. Bring our lock ring down. Grab this in. I'm going to position this the way that we want it. With the ball lettering facing out.
right, so there you have it. There's a quick, simple way of making a modern farmhouse dining room chandelier. Now this kind of matches the decor we have behind me. As you can see, we have some floating shelves here in the dining room and we have some floating shelves as well over in our living room. So it kind of flows with everything we got going on. Uh, eventually this room will be uh, a little bit brighter. We're gonna have some wooden beams up on the ceiling as well, which is gonna start tying everything together. So I'm really happy with the way it came out. I think it took me somewhere around two hours to build, you know, in total. So I'm going to leave links for all the parts for this down in the description below. The only thing that you might need to provide are um, a little bit of electrical cord for yourself and like I said, the black chain um, and the barn wood or whatever wood you, use, you know, choose to use. Um, I think that this would be a great design as well, you know, with a smooth board painted white. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoy this build of this light fixture. I hope you go ahead and build yourself one. It was a lot of fun. It was fun to be creative and do something that was personalized just for our home. So if you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.